If you're going to have an operation, your surgeon may say something like, don't worry, you'll be asleep. What that means is that you will be under general anesthesia, a combination of medications that put you in a sleep-like state before a surgery or other medical procedure. What is general anesthesia? General anesthesia doesn't actually put you to sleep. It's more like a reversible coma, though not as scary as that may sound. In fact, you can expect a collection of four conditions or results from being under general anesthesia, which set it apart from natural sleep. A state of unconsciousness, an inability to make memories, a loss of pain sensation, and relaxation with no muscle tone. Did you know? The ancient Egyptians were the first people who used anesthesia. Now, how does general anesthesia do all that? By suppressing your central nervous system, which causes a loss of consciousness and inability to feel pain. It does this by binding to your brain cell receptors. The practice of anesthesia has changed dramatically since its invention. Modern anesthesiologists not only deliver care to patients, but also serve as consultants. Assessment before the operation. If you're attending a pre-operation evaluation, an anesthesiologist will meet with you and assess your medical history. First, he or she will ask questions related to your medical background, as well as any habits you have that might interfere with or affect the anesthesia. It is important for you to tell them about any medications you may take, including supplements, herbal remedies, and recreational drugs, as well as how much alcohol you drink. He or she will also ask about previous surgeries or uses of anesthesia, as well as relevant family history. Finally, you will be given a quick physical exam. The specialist will listen to your heart and lungs and review your test results. If you've had something to drink or eat within the last 8 to 12 hours, the specialist will send you away and you will have to reschedule your surgery. This is to prevent choking if you were to vomit during the surgery. During the operation On the day of surgery, after a meeting with the anesthesiologist, you'll be taken to a preoperative or holding area where an intravenous or IV line will be placed. The IV will deliver fluids and medications directly into your bloodstream. You may receive medication to help you relax as well. Next, you will be transferred to the operating room, where they will monitor your vital signs during and after your procedure. They will place an oximeter probe on your finger to continuously check the oxygen level in your blood. A blood pressure cuff will be placed on your arm to take blood pressure readings, and an electrocardiogram, or EKG, sticky pad will be placed on your chest to monitor your heart rate and rhythm. All of this is to make sure that your basic bodily functions stay within normal limits during the procedure and that they are not affected by the anesthetic agents. Next, they'll give you an oxygen mask and your anesthesiologist will give you a dose of a medication such as propofol to make you sleep. Within a few seconds, you will be unconscious. In some cases, you will also be given a muscle relaxer. An airway device, like an endotracheal tube, will be inserted by your anesthesia provider. They will attach this tube to a respirator, as you will not be able to breathe on your own under anesthesia. To maintain this state of unconsciousness, a mix of anesthetic gas and oxygen will be delivered through the endotracheal tube and a continuous dose of medication will be delivered by IV. Your anesthesiologist will also give you pain medication to ensure that you are pain-free throughout your procedure. He or she may suggest regional anesthesia, like a peripheral nerve block, which involves injecting local anesthesia around a nerve or group of nerves to help with pain control after your procedure. Getting the right amount of general anesthesia is critical. Dosage is usually calculated based on a patient's weight, age, and medical history. If you use or have used recreational drugs, you should tell your doctor. This may affect the way your brain reacts to anesthetic drugs. Did you know? The concept of modern anesthesia was introduced in 1926. In Greek, anesthesia means without sensation. 
after the operation. At the end of the procedure, your anesthesiologist will reverse the coma and wake you up. He or she may give you antibiotics, medication to control nausea or vomiting, or pain medication for comfort before or after you awaken. If you had a breathing tube in place, he or she will remove it as soon as you show you can safely breathe on your own. Next, you will be taken to the recovery room, where you will be closely monitored. You may feel lightheaded and slightly disoriented. There is a risk of confusion after the operation, especially for older patients or those with conditions that affect the central nervous system. Does general anesthesia have any complications? Possible risks and complications during anesthesia, such as injury to the lips, tongue, or teeth from insertion of the breathing tube, may occur. Sore throat is very common. You may also experience shivering, nausea, or vomiting. Corneal abrasion may also occur, which is rare. In some extremely rare cases, vision loss is also possible. If the dosage of the anesthetic medication is not enough, you may wake up momentarily during surgery, which might cause a very unpleasant experience. Also, decline in the function of organs like the kidneys and liver may happen in patients with previously uncontrolled disease. Remember, don't drive or make important decisions for 24 hours after receiving general anesthesia. And please, make sure you have a driver to get you home after your procedure. Before surgery, you should feel comfortable asking your anesthesiologist any questions about the risks and benefits of anesthesia and the type of anesthesia that is best for you. Physicians are supposed to ensure that you provide informed consent for recommended treatments. This requires that you have received enough information about the procedure and its risks in easy to understand terms and that you are under no pressure. Patient safety during surgery has greatly improved over the years and this is your anesthesiologist's main concern. Thanks for watching and stay healthy.